What is up, everybody? Welcome to the 2022 R9T. Excited to ride this motorcycle. Been wanting to get back on an R9T for some time now. Uh, actually, mostly because I'm considering an R9T for uh, for the garage, for adding one to the stable. And uh, I think just the standard R9T, not the pure, not the uh, urban, uh, but just the standard R9T is the one that I, I'm really considering. And we'll get into all that, all the reasons why I'm considering it and why if you're maybe you're a newer rider or wanting to graduate to the R9T, we'll talk about all those things too uh, as we go along. I guess before we even get started, we could talk about the, uh, the seat height here, which is uh, around 31 and a half, 31.7 inches, I think is precisely the number. I can get a firm ball of my foot down on both sides. Um, I can get a full flat foot down on one side and kind of tiptoe on the other. Uh, I mean, uh, this bike uh, comes in under 500 pounds, so uh, as a heritage, kind of a roadster style bike, uh, it's not going to be super overwhelming as far as power goes, as well as the fact that it has uh, stability control. Uh, kind of like uh, the, the big R18 does, you know, with this Boxster engine, it's got the 1170cc uh, Boxster engine in this bike. And a nice sounding Akrapovic uh, a dual exhaust. I think it's the, what do you call it? The two into one into two. Uh, we've got different ride modes on this bike. Uh, I believe there's three different ride modes. I want to say it's uh, rain, road, and then, I don't know if it's sport, but there's three different ride modes. You can add an optional third ride mode, which is called, I think it's called uh, dynamic. Uh, but that's optional, and I'm guessing because this bike has the optional uh, grip warmers as well as cruise control, uh, that this is one of those bikes that is going to have uh, that third, or sorry, that fourth optional ride mode. So let's talk about the controls uh, while we're we're at a stop here. On the right side, we have uh, our grip warmers. Uh, your ride mode button and then your on your power on switch as well as the ignition is the same button on your right And then on the left here, you've got your cruise control uh, your hazards uh, You got your menu toggle uh, As well as this little question mark. I'm guessing that's the trip uh, toggle um, And then uh, on the top you have your uh, uh, right at your trigger finger on your left hand You've got a bright flasher and then on the bottom here, you got your typical turn signals and horn. So pretty standard controls, uh, nice analog dash. It looks kind of small here. Uh, it probably looks small in the video, but I, what I will say is that even though it looks like a small dash, it, it might, like, even though it may look like a small dash in the video, uh, it's very visible. You got your speedometer on the left and their tack on the right. Um, and some digital, uh, some digital menus to toggle through. We've got uh, on the left, we've got the, uh, excuse me, we've got the uh, odometer, and on the right, looks like you have your manual, uh, your, sorry, your, your gear, and then your manual speedometer, which says 25. I'm not sure why it says 25 when <laughs> we're not going anywhere. Uh, and then I believe this is your ride mode here. So if I push t uh, to change the ride mode, let's just put it in in road because it uh, we started in, in the dynamic mode first and to me that that mode felt kind of torquey to start off so let's just put it in in road mode and see how that feels here as we ride yeah this is much less torquey here as you um off the line uh so uh, let's say you're graduating to this bike or maybe uh this is your your first motorcycle which i think that uh you could uh, that a, a new rider, depending on uh, your skill level, your ex your confidence level in riding to start off with, I think an R90 wouldn't be all too much to handle. Uh, especially, uh, I think it's the, uh, 
be 2019 and beyond has a lot of options or a lot of safety features on this bike to help you out uh, when you're riding so I think that you're gonna be okay if, if you're starting out on an R9T uh, but definitely a nice bike to graduate from maybe if you started off on a, on a small uh, small like cruiser style motorcycle or even a smaller uh, standard bike uh, maybe with a 600 cc engine 750 cc's uh, this is going to be a nice bike to graduate to because you got different ride modes um, it leans you forward a little bit in the riding position but it's still pretty upright uh, you've got your knees tucked with these uh, these uh, I, want, I want to call them rear controls but it doesn't really feel like a lean forward like a like a true rear control would feel like uh, but this bike comes standard uh, now in 2022 with all kinds of great features uh, they've gone away from the the standard like halogen bulb and you're looking at a, a standard LED uh, headlight as well as LED turn signals Let's see how this does passing Woo. <laughs> wow <laughs> I did not lean quite far enough over in that turn but uh, I, uh, it just worries me a little because these tires aren't I don't think their tires are, are quite warm yet but hey uh, pretty confident pretty confident on that R18 there and some adrenaline pumping now through on here on the R9T so uh, let's talk about so we talked about LED headlamp we're talked about LED turn signals uh, you've got that automatic stability control as well as uh, as uh, the standard features safety features Woo <laughs> it was a little uh, pokey getting out of first or getting out of first gear there so I think I just didn't quite let the clutch out uh, getting used to that friction zone but anyway it comes to Sandra with the BMW safety features I'll have the, that information for you here on the screen we're talking about 109 max horsepower along with a 85 and a half uh, pound-feet of max torque or feet pounds of torque uh, and we'll, we'll, we'll flip that back into and dy dynamic mode and uh, and have a little fun here so yeah, with that stability control, traction control, uh, you've got ABS standard on this bike. You know, as we got into that turn pretty quickly there, uh, this bike feel, felt super confident. You know, even though I might've been less confident because it's early, I, you know, uh, I tried to, to ride a little more conservatively when I feel like my tires aren't warm yet. So, so there's that as well. But uh, no, no, like no keyless start here. Um, you got your, your standard keyed ignition. Uh, what I love about the R19, we t I talked a little bit earlier about uh, considering adding this bike to my uh, to my garage, is the customability of the R19. Uh, it's one of the things and one of the allures of, of of Harley Davidson, right? Is being able to customize the crap out of your bike. You know, you can do that to a lot of bikes, but the R19, I feel like you can add a whole new flavor to a, a bike that typically. You know, it doesn't it doesn't uh, turn a lot of heads because of how you know basic it looks, but you can really uh, do some things with this bike all the way up to changing the on your engine head covers, uh, all kinds of things that you can do to to customize, make this bike your own, uh, all the way down to like an aluminum tank, uh, and and put a has a really like raw naked finish on it. Yeah, so in dynamic mode, it feels a lot more torquey in the lower end, uh, and yeah, a much more sporty feel. As a fun bike to ride, again, this riding position, it isn't quite lean forward, uh, not like on the R9T Racer that I had actually ridden before. I put a link to that uh, bike here in the video, uh, but yeah, it's not as quite of a sporty lean forward feel. Uh, you got like a like a probably like a two inch riser here from the handlebars the, the racer Which I don't think that they make anymore had the clip on handlebars. So it had to really in a, a lean forward position this year is a Even though it's a sportier bike and, a, and you are leaning forward a bit uh, at, at my height at least I'm five foot six uh, with a 30 inch inseam and my arm spans about 70 inches uh, This bike feels like it fits me really well um, it, it's 
it's one of those bikes that when you especially like when you walk up to it you're like look at this this little this tiny bike uh, especially when you compare it to other some of the other bmw models especially like the uh their their adventure bikes uh and especially here when you when you match it up against the big r r18 uh this bike looks uh small in stature but it packs a pop uh and we'll talk about custom mobility there's all kinds of different uh uh, uh, exhausts that you can put on here, uh, slip-ons, and full exhaust systems. Uh, just a ton that you can do to this bike. Uh, mirror, I mean, I, I won't go through every option, obviously, but there's just so much to do and so much to consider uh, when you're cha changing up the style of this bike. I love the sound coming out of the exhaust. Yeah. Overall, just love the feel of this bike. It has kind of these nice uh, cutouts here uh, in the tank. So you can hug the tank really nicely. Uh, looks like we lost some of the group, so we're gonna have to slow down. But uh, it's just a nice, uh, it's a nice feel. Uh, as far as riding position and comfortability of the bike, the seat feels really nice. You know, it doesn't. the seat doesn't look like much when you look at it, but it, it's nice and cushy, and it also has that firmness to it to where you don't feel like you're gonna hit the bottom of this seat pan and be uncomfortable after a while. Uh, the other thing you're also probably gonna wanna do on, on a bike like this is, is get that fender eliminator um, to take off that, uh, you know, that kind of ugly, to each their own, but the kind of ugly long extended fender, uh, and chop that thing off. Maybe add uh, just solo saddle uh, because I don't know how comfortable someone's going to be on the back of one of these, especially with like no backrest or uh, and uh, with a bike that can get get on it a little bit. Uh, it's just not going to be a lot of fun to uh, for a passenger to ride on. But if you do have somebody, a significant other, a uh, kid, somebody who wants to ride on the back, it does come standard. The R9T does come standard unless you're going with one of the uh, options, the color options where it's going to come with a solo saddle and with that little hard uh, plastic the fairing bit there at the, at the rear of the seat. Oh, obviously, if it uh, if it's, there's something that's the a name for that, I'll have it for you. It's like the Rex, so the group caught up to us. So yeah, just looking in the mirrors here, uh, there's a little bit of obstruction. I'm a, kind of a broad-shouldered guy, even for my size, uh, but plenty to see um well when we get out here at, at like highway speeds which we're gonna get on the highway now i can let you know like how badly these these mirrors shake that's always a concern i think when you've got uh these stock mirrors these plasticky light mirrors how dare this car run that red light and cut us off oh what a pain so yeah, I'm getting up here, 55 miles an hour. There's a little bit of shake in these mirrors, but I can still see out of them. It's not as like useless as on like a, on a Harley when you get that shake going and you can't see crap out of them. So we're in fourth gear. We've got the uh, shaft driven uh, transmission or final drive on this bike. Uh, it, and it has six gears and uh, you know we're, we're here at 70 miles an hour and uh, just under uh, 5,000 rpm this bike still has a, a ways to go a little power left in that uh, rpm range kick it into fifth gear Woohoo! yeah <laughs> yeah this is a fun bike you know we're out all here on the freeway uh in in traffic and uh wind wind noise isn't bad you know it depends on the obviously it's going to depend a little on your helmet um but like as far as like riding without a, a windshield um here at highway speeds I, I don't ever ride with a windshield and i ride a sportier bike i, I ride a, i ride a 1290 super duke r and this this is just this is just fine You've got a bit of a lean forward here on this bike. Uh, so, you know, you're kind of, uh, you're 
you're kind of uh, not fighting, not fighting against the wind here, uh, which is nice. And again, we got all the way up to almost 90 miles an hour, I think, in uh, fifth gear. So yeah, this bike is really nice. You know, this isn't helping me because I am thinking about uh, swapping out the, the old Sportster and considering uh, maybe a different bike to put in the garage or maybe just condensing down into one motorcycle instead of uh, having two different bikes. And this would be uh, definitely after ri not having ridden this bike in so long, I rode this bike maybe four or five years ago, and riding it again, it's uh, really got my attention now. So yeah, uh, talking about the, the vibration in the, in the mirrors here, uh, you know, some people will ask about motorcycles, and this is something that I get asked on my review videos a lot, is how, how bad is the vibration riding on this motorcycle? And I gotta say, um, I mean, I feel it in the hands, but it's very smooth. Um, even, you know, you can hear the exhaust maybe in the video, and it may sound kind of growly, and, and uh, you know, this is kind of the, in the Roadster family of, of BMW motorcycles. Uh, you might have seen the, sh the, the bike shake a little when it turned on, but uh, aside from the slight vibration in the hands, uh, this bike runs and rides really smooth. And uh, uh, what I will say is, you know, maybe after riding for like an hour, hour and a half, you might get that like numb handed, uh, uh, you know, from the vibrations feel. But, you know, it's going to be very minimal. It's not going to be like a Harley. It's not going to be like uh, like the R R18 maybe where it's shaking a little harder because of uh, the size of the engine or uh, the ability of the... the the counterbalance, I don't know, I don't know if these engines have counterbalancing in them, but the ability of the, of the engine to uh, to minimize vibration, but this bike is, is just as smooth uh, as, as a bike you could expect in, from BMW in this way. And really the R19's been around for a while. There, have, there were some changes made from uh, earlier than 2019 models. Could have dropped it down into fourth. Woohoo! <laughs> oh, brake check too. That was nice. So yeah, nice, nice feel on the brakes. We got the the dual disc here in front. Uh, we got the yeah, he's going off into the way station. Uh, <laughs> we got the dual disc brakes in front, uh, single disc in the back. I'll have brake specifications here on the screen for you. Uh, so the spoked wheels again. You know the spoked wheels on a bike like this look really nice. I think. Uh, and it serves a purpose, right? They're lighter. Um, you're talking about uh, they, uh, en enabling the bike to, to dampen a little bit more of the, the road uh, vibrations of the road imperfections when you're talking about a, a spoked wheel. And then, uh, yeah, it just, got, it just it has that classic look that you would expect on an R19. But again, you got all kinds of options for... Uh, <laughs> Nope. You got all kinds of options on this bike to change out the wheels, change out the tires. Uh, speaking of the tires, we got the 120 uh, in the front and the 180 in the back. Uh, pretty, I think pretty standard for a bike like this. Uh, uh, the suspension, as you can see up here in the front, is adjustable. Uh, you've got the upside down telescopic forks in the front and the adjustable monoshock uh, rear suspension. And the ride on this bike is really nice. It's really smooth. Uh, you know, the roads aren't great here in California, and you're going to enjoy, be able to enjoy the ride and not worry about, uh, you know, an occasional uh, pothole, road imperfection, all that kind of stuff. Oh, the metered lights. Oh, what a load of garbage. Yeah. get on it <laughs> oh boy yeah this bike I mean I, I say this a lot uh, last year I rode uh, the s1000 XR I really love that bike. If I was considering getting a touring bike, that really is kind of at the top of my list. 
uh, as opposed to like a big bagger. And this bike, as far as like uh, I, an all-in-one, uh, that's probably the wrong wrong word, but like a multi-purpose, -pur multi multi-use bike, I feel like I can ride this bike for hours because of the comfortable riding position. But at the same time, um, you know, this bike gets up and gets on it. What else, what else can I say about the R9T? Uh, I, I have really, that, I'm at the end of my words. <laughs> But what I will say is if you guys have questions that I did not address or things that I did not address in this video Make sure you leave those questions in the comments. I'll do my best to answer them And if I can't I'll make sure I hunt down that answer for you um, I hope you enjoyed this video. I enjoyed riding this bike thoroughly uh, Again, I, I, I always say this in my my test ride videos that if you guys uh, Are considering the R9T definitely go out and try and give one a ride the demo truck is out and about um, if not, maybe, maybe you've got a DM, BMW dealer that's going to let you take one out. But I would highly recommend giving this bike a try, especially if you're a shorter rider. This is uh, a smaller rider. This is going to fit you really well as opposed to uh, a bigger or taller uh, BMW motorcycle. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you liked it, found anything helpful in this video, make sure you hit that thumbs up, which is the like button. And if you haven't already, smash that subscribe button. Guys, if you are out there riding, please, please, please be safe. Be kind to one another. My name is Eric, I'm that one guy, and I am out.